everybody. It's just wonderful to see such support for Ketu. It's not for Gyantrava, for sure, because we do several programs all the time. And it's very rare that we have this kind of a, a supportive audience. And it's all thanks to our star today, Ketuki, whose book, her third book titled A Certain Grace, The Cities of India, which she started working on in 2005. And it's her third book, as I said. We are here to celebrate the launch. It has 78 black and white photographs and has been published by Photo Inc. We have with us today Devika Dalat Singh, very quietly tucked away in one corner. You'll soon see them on stage. Who's, she said she wanted me to give her the right, num give the right numbers. She's produced 40 books of, and published 12. Have I got the right numbers? Yes. The Siddhis, the word Siddhi, possibly comes from the Ethiopian word Saidi, meaning my lord. Numbering about 70,000 and populated mainly in Gujarat and Karnataka, with fewer numbers in Bombay, Goa, and Hyderabad, the Siddhi came to India about 400 years ago from East Africa. They came as slaves, traders, sailors, and merchants. Some, like Malik Ambar, rose to nobility threatening the likes of Emperor Jahangir. Such was the power of the Siddhi that even Shivaji failed to annex the Janjira fortress just outside Bombay, which was held for over four, 300 years by the Siddhi. The Siddhi of Gujarat followed the Sufi faith, while those in Karnataka are mainly Christian and Hindu. I would now introduce what I would say the three protagonists of the evening. But before I do that, let me just tell you the flow after I've made the introductions, I'm going to invite Ketaki to talk about what we love to call creative processes. This is a series that we launched a year and a half ago and have been very fortunate to have had all these, the stalwarts like William Kentridge, Malavika Sarukai, Shiraze Hushiari, three of them last month, in fact, Arjun Apadurai, Nalini Malani, Arjun. Um, Atul Dodia, Geef Patel, as well as um, no, Malvika, yes, but there was also a couple of others. I'm sorry, it's slipping my mind. And what we do with this is that we invite um, practitioners, artists, to talk about their creative processes, which we then record and hope that it would help uh, researchers, say, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years down the line, to hear the process directly from the practitioner, rather than um, a mediated understanding through a curator or a critic or a museum practitioner, historian. And this is something that we do feel that it's very, very important for posterity. And uh, we continue, we will continue to have several others. And so if there are, is this anybody in the audience who would like to be part of this creative processes, do do get in touch with us, because we do think it's, it's vital to have them talk in first person. So Ketu will talk about, she'll do a PowerPoint on her creative processes leading up to her work, the recent work, Siddhis, after which she and Devika will be in conversation, and they would be inviting questions from the audience also. And that will be followed by a film on the cities by Bear Rose Shroff, who's also with us today. Ketaki Shade has resisted digital photography and continues to work in black and white with chemistry and silver gelatin prints. She won the Sanskriti Award for Indian Photography in 1992 and the Higashikawa Award 2006 in Japan for Best Foreign Photographer. In 2008, she was honored with a solo show at the Fête du Livre in Aix-en-Provence. She has um, exhibited, she's done 14 solo shows, starting from 1991, and 19 group shows. And I don't think I've got, uh, I think I'm sure that the numbers are right there. Of course, she's widely collected and published, and her work's also been used in films. 
Her first book, Twin Spotting, Photographs of Patel Twins in Britain and India, was launched in 1999 to critical acclaim. Selected images, images were exhibited in Century City at the Tate Modern in 2001. Her second book, a culmination of 14 years of work, was titled Bombay Mix Street Photographs, it was launched in 2007 <clears throat> and exhibited in Tokyo, New York, Bombay and Delhi, as well as Ix and Provence, which I mentioned earlier. Devika Dalat Singh established Photo Inc. in 2001 in New Delhi, and in 2008, Photo Inc. expanded into a gallery to exhibit contemporary Indian photography and international photographers. Her engagement with the world of photography has been as an editor, curator, and publisher of photo books. She has juried for the RNG India Press Photo Awards, the W. Eugene Smith Grant, and been a nominator for the 2012 Pre Pictet Prize. Devika was the associate curator for the Indian presentations at the 2007 Les Reconfres d'Arles. She was a uh, sorry, that's the name of the photography festival, and the 2007 Photo Key Biennale in France. She was a project director for the Photograph, Painted, Post, and the Moment, comprising eight exhibitions held at the National Gallery of Modern Art, Mumbai, in 2008. She co-curated The Self and the Other, Portraiture in Contemporary Indian Photography for the Palau de la Virena, Virena Barcelona, and Museo Artium, Vittorio, in Spain. In 2011, she curated a group exhibition titled Photographing the Street, Afghanistan, Bangladesh, Bhutan, India, Maldives, Nepal, Pakistan, and Sri Lanka, which was exhibited at the first edition of the Delhi Photo Festival. In 2012, she curated a group exhibition titled The Portrait, Contemporary Indian Photography at Photo Free of Fremantle, Australia. Behroz Shroff teaches cinema at the University of California, Irvine, and has made a trilogy of documentary films on the city and has also helped Kedeki throughout the book. Behrose is a world authority on cities, and her latest and her first film, which we're going to show today, We Are African and We Are Indian, has won awards. And we are very, very fortunate that Behrose is also in Bombay at the moment and present today with us. Behrose's film will give us a glimpse into the history of the cities in their own words. I now invite Ketiki for her presentation. Thank you, Rashmi, and thank you for your generous words, and all of you for coming here today, and most of you are my old and close friends, so it's great having you. Um, as many of you in the audience have yourselves experienced, the birth of a book is a thrilling experience. After years of work and ups and downs, it feels so good to be able to hold your own book in your own hand. And for this, I have a lot of people to thank, many of whom are here this evening, which I shall do so at the end of my short introduction. All books tell a story, and mine does too. Mine is a book of photographs, because that's what I do. And it's not a seminal book on the Siddhi, nor is it an anthropological study. It is the story of the Siddhi, told so eloquently by Mahmoud Mamdani, African scholar par excellence in his classic essay, Before My Images. It is also the story of photographing the Siddhi and my engagement with this wonderful community, numbering about 65,000 and spread out mainly in Gujarat, Karnataka, with few pockets in Bombay, Goa, and Hyderabad. And finally, it is also the story of the making of a photography book spearheaded by Devika Dolat Singh of Photo Inc. and designed by Aurobind, both of whom have given my work such beauty and grace, thanks to their talents. Rory Bester, a photography critic um, in the afterword of my book, 
and who had never known about Siddhi. He's a South African critic, and he didn't know that we had a community like the Siddhi in India. So he did up his own reading before he saw my pictures. And he said, compared to the brutal unfolding of the transatlantic slave trade, the story of the Siddhi is altogether longer, smaller, quieter. I hope I have been able to capture this in my photographs. After I give this brief introduction, I will show you about half the pictures from my book. So you'll have to see the other half if you can buy one. So how did it all start? It was, a, it was on a family holiday in Gir during Diwali in 2005 that I first saw the Siddhi in Sirwan, a village in the middle of the forest given to them by the erstwhile Nawab of Junagar in recognition of their loyal services. I was immediately intrigued. My mother suggested we visit a nearby farm owned by Jai Bhai, my father's childhood friend, as he may be able to shed some light on the Siddhi in Gir. We did, it was an excellent idea, and in his employ was a Siddhi who took me to Jambur, another Siddhi village. I can really recall this first visit so clearly, and I'm glad I did not have my camera with me. No camera in hand and accompanied by a trusted Siddhi, I remember Jambur looking like a dusty film set with a gated wall and a chai and a beery shop. And at the entrance of the wall sat these four um, young men in T-shirts and baseball caps, studs in their ears, playing a very serious game of carom. If looks could kill, honestly, I would be dead. I could sense irritation, hostility, perhaps even resentment to this very obvious outsider. But my companion, uh, thanks to Jai Bhai, waved me in and took me to the home of the community organizer, Hirbai Ben Lobi. It was Hirbai Ben who became the fulcrum of my many photographic journeys in the years to come. And two of the angry boys from the four at the entrance, Majid and Hussein, still angry and daunting, appear a bit mellowed in my photographs, which I took of them two years after I saw them. Weeks and many mobile phone exchanges later, I was in Hirbai's home and wadi, camera in hand this time. Although I photographed her in the kitchen, in her home, in her wadi, I finally chose a straight portrait of her uh, in her fruit orchard, looking directly into the camera with her piercing eyes and a large glinting nose stud, standing tall and fearless like the trees that surrounded her and the one she leant on. She is a fiercely independent, fearless woman, a bit of a bully, who enjoys the attention of the press and also of her many followers, the ones who read and write for her, whether it's for a bank loan or a government letter, or who reply to her many personal letters that she receives. Um, when I had met her, she had won the Aga Khan Award for um, uh, local leadership. And then thanks to my friend Sudha, who's here in the audience today, and who came with me on one of my Siddhi trips, she suggested that we should nominate um, Hirbai Ben for the Bajaj Rural Puraskar Award, which Sudha and I did. And I'm happy to say three years later, she won it. Her initiatives include a manure plant employing only Siddhi women and a balwadi to teach children the Gujarati script to supplement religious studies at the local madrasa. She took me to her mother's grave and told me in her typical no-nonsense manner that she was born in Jambur, so were her parents, and this is where she will die. Her sons have all married Siddhis and all live within a bussable radius. I probably attended every wedding. When I asked her about Africa, she said that the Nawab said to her ancestors, come with me, come to protect my forest. That's why, she, and she added, Jya Siddhi hai, sin hai. Where there is a Siddhi, there is a lion. 
The origin of the Siddhi, of course, is not that simple. And Mahmud Mamdani has really written about it beautifully in his essay in my book. Through Hirbai Ben, I was able to photograph her family and the larger community. Soon I was on a roll, traveling all over Gujarat, from Ahmedabad to Anjan, Baroda to Bhuj, Daman and Diu, the Gir, Mahua to Mandir, Jafrabad to Junagar, Rajkot to Ratanpur, Sachin to Surendranagar, attending marriages, births, Uras celebrations, visiting dargahs and chillas, fields, homes, and schools. In 2006, while I was in Surendranagar, invited to a Siddhi wedding, and by strange coincidence, just next to my family ancestral home in Vadwan, and my uncle is here um, today, who, uh, and my cousins, who all have a share in this home. So it was quite amazing that I was at a Siddhi wedding five minutes away from my family home. And here's where I met Farida, an unmarried bank clerk from Bhavnagar, who soon became my steady companion for many of the Gujarat shoots. She, is, she features in Beros's many films, including the one that we will see later this evening. Dressed in wedding attire and elaborately hairstyled, Farida started taking me to meet various members of the community. I think it was at that wedding, which was maybe six months after meeting Hirbai Ben, and so close to my very own ancestral home, that I thought, yes, this is the start of something new. The stars are falling in place. And I started photographing insatiably, a bit obsessively. And as all of you know, who take pictures, who write stories, who make films, it's when that obsession gets to you that you know something is working. Months later, at her great-grandfather's grave in Bhavnagar, Farida points to an inscription from the Nawab to her great-grandfather, which said, to my loyal servant, and then tells me of her grandfather's voyage in the early 70s by steamer to East Africa, and shows me his written account, Maro Purva Africano Pravas, my East African journey. I photograph her by his grave. Many years later, Mahmood was to pick up the same book from Farida, and since Mahmood reads, writes, and thinks perfectly in Gujarati, he was able to uh, bring it into his text. And from whatever, and Barrows can correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think the Siddhi, except for uh, Farida's grandfather, we haven't met anyone who's really gone back. Recently, Farida went back uh, on an invitation. But otherwise, uh, for most of them, when we talk to them, Africa is just, you know, something, a, a distant past. And as Beruz and I discussed yesterday, it's really just their music, the drum, and um, the dance that um, has any roots in their African past. It was Farida again, my soulmate of many journeys, who accompanied Mahmood and me on Mahmood's first journey in 2009. He found his ancestral village, Haryana, from where his great-grandfather emigrated to East Africa. And I felt somewhere this was not only his emotional moment, but this was also unreal. His ancestral village, my ancestral home, and the Siddhi surrounding us. I, of course, quickly snapped a Mahmood standing by a milestone which said Hadiana and so many kilometers. And he was really happy with that photograph. Soon Mahmood was eating what he thought were only his family delicacies, which only his grandmother could cook for him. Churma na laddu and batakia. And in the course of his many interviews that week, he would discover over 50 Swahili words in the Gujarati spoken by the Siddhi including Sokoni, kitchen, Pasi, iron, Funiko, lid, Fagio, broom, Mashamba, farm, Jambo, greeting, and many words that were familiar also to Aurobind, who, like Mahmood, is a Wahindi from East Africa. From Gujarat, over the first few years of the book, I then traveled to Siddhi villages in Karnataka with my friend Channa, 
a Siddhi actor in the Nina Sam troupe. Here in the paradise of lush forests, I photograph Channa's family and the community outside Manchikeri and Bilki. Here the community is a mix of Hindus and Christians, unlike the Sufi Siddhi of Gujarat and the Muslim Siddhi in Bombay and Hyderabad. In fact, together with my friend Sudha, I remember sitting in a simple church with a Madonna and a cross in the middle of a virgin, beautiful forest. Where we were, we, have, we had no idea. I wondered how beautiful it would have been to listen to Siddhi voices singing hymns in Kannada, um, but it sadly wasn't a Sunday and the church was empty. Like the photographs of Farida in her home or praying by her great-grandfather's grave, the photograph of the church that I have as a memory remains only on my contact sheets. It did not make it to the book, but that's something that we can discuss when Devika and I uh, discuss together. When you make a photography book, you just can't put everything in. Um, I can continue today with stories from my book, but time will run out. And there's more to today's program, as Rashmi has just informed you. But before I break, I would like to share with you my friendship with Juje and Juliana, who are here with us today. Um, originally from Halyal in Karnataka, now settled in Bombay, Juje is a brilliant national level athlete. And he and his wife, Juliana, now live in Bombay where Juje works with the State Government Employees Provident Fund Scheme, which allows him to continue his sports regime. 